Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. A lot of my DIYs include free templates which you can customize pretty easily using GIMP. So in this video I'd like to just go over how to do some simple image manipulation using GIMP. I'll leave a download link to GIMP in the description box below and if any of you are interested in a Photoshop tutorial let me know in the comments. Alright, so we'll be making custom potion bottle labels as an example for this tutorial, but you can incorporate the skills you learn here for any other project. To start off, you should just get familiar with the layout of GIMP. On the left side here, we have the toolbox window, which has all the tools that are available to you for editing images. If you hover over them, you'll see a little explanation as to what the tool is, as well as a keyboard shortcut. Which brings us to the second thing you should do, learn some of these keyboard shortcuts. They'll honestly save you tons of time. Today we're just going to focus on a few of these shortcuts which are really uh, handy, but you can just take your time and try and learn some of the other ones too if you end up noticing that you use certain tools more often than others. We're going to focus on the move tool which you can select by pressing the M key, the zoom tool which you can select by pressing the Z key, and the text tool which you can select by pressing, you guessed it, the T key. So M for move, Z for zoom, and T for text. Pretty simple. Now let's get into some hands-on editing. You'll need to download the resources that I've provided for this tutorial from the link in the description, open the zip file you downloaded, and just extract the folder somewhere on your computer, such as your desktop, just somewhere you're going to remember where it is. When you open this up, you're going to see a label file, which is a PSD file. That is a Photoshop file, which opens perfectly fine in GIMP. And then you'll also have an images folder and a fonts folder. First off, open this up and install the font just to make sure you have the font will be used. Once you've done that, go ahead and drag and drop the label file into GIMP. And this is what you should see. Um, and this is a custom label that I created just for this tutorial. It doesn't look like too much just yet, but we're going to add some things like text and a background and an image in here. So if you push the Z key on your keyboard, that will allow you to zoom in. And if you hold control, you can zoom out. And if you're zoomed in a lot like this, you can hold the space bar and then move your mouse around to actually pan around the image. Now on the right side, you'll see the layers window, and this has the different layers of the image in it. We have a background, which is just white. We have a border. You can click the eye icon here to hide and show the layer. So if we hide this, you can see that's the border. Uh, the decorations would be these images here, the shading, you can't see quite yet. And then the white space is actually the white space around the label. And that also includes the Muggle Magic watermark here. Make sure that we have the background layer selected and we're going to add a background to this image. So go back to what you downloaded, open the images folder and the backgrounds folder. And then I've provided just a few old parchment looking backgrounds that we can use. I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of these. So make sure you have the background layer selected here. And then we're going to drag this image into our document. So you can see that gives us a background image. And now we can see the shading. And if you don't like how this background looks, you can always use a different one um, to delete this layer. You can delete whatever layer you're on if you just select the layer and then click the trash icon here. And that would just delete this layer if you don't want it. And then you can try one of the other images. But once you find one that you like, I'm just going to stick with this one. So now if you want to move your background around a little bit just to see if you can find a spot that looks a little better for you, go ahead and push the M key for the move tool. And then we can actually drag this around. And as you can see, because this layer is behind all these other layers and we're just moving this layer around, all the other layers stay in the same spot and the background that we're moving around is what's moving. Now, if you wanted to scale the background image, we can go over here and select the scale tool, which is right here, and then click on the background layer on the image, and it'll bring this window up. Now, we're going to want to make sure that we have this link clicked so that it's connected. And that means that we have locked the aspect ratio. So if I click on one of the corners and drag up and down, you can see that the image does not warp at all. It stays in the aspect ratio that it should be so that none of the uh, elements in here are warped. So if I wanna just make it a little bit bigger, we'll just do that and then I'll hit the scale button here and then it scales it. Okay, so now we've learned how to move an image, we've learned about what these layers are and we've learned how to scale an image. Now we're going to learn about adding text. Click the T key 
that will let us select the text tool. And at this point, you probably just wanna keep this layer selected because it's going to add a new text layer. So let's click and drag to create a text box. If we start typing, I can type, you can't really read that because it's so small right now, but that says Amartentia. With the tools options, this changes depending on what tool you have selected. So when we have the text tool selected, we can modify different aspects of our text tool right here. So if I click this button, I can select the font that I want to use, or I could just highlight this and start typing the name of the font that I want to use. And there it is. And so our font over here has changed to Mary Jane Antique, which is the one that I had you install. And now right here, this is the size of the font. If we highlight this and then we push up or down on our keyboard, you can see that it actually goes up. And I can hold it to make it scale a little bit faster. Okay, so I don't know how this space got in here, but just delete that. And if I hover over the top or the bottom here, you can see that we get this yellow highlighted box so I can actually rescale the uh, text box that I'm using just to get this name of the potion in there where I want it to be. I'm actually going to scale that down just a tiny bit and then I'm going to center the text by pressing this button over here in the tools options. I'm just going to type the most powerful love potion in the world and then I can select all of that and I'm gonna scale it down. Over here in your layers, just click away from the text layer to deselect the text. So right now, this is pretty good for a potion label, but I'm going to add a little symbol down here, a little magical symbol. So if you go back to our downloads and we go back up to the images folder, you'll see symbols. And I've included about 50 different um, magical symbols in here that you can use for your potion. So I'm just going to pick one that might have something to do with a love potion, like, well, I don't know, the one that looks like a heart. Now, if I drag this symbol in here, it will add it to a new layer. And there we go. And now what we're gonna do is scale it down. So again, click the scale, click on the layer that you want to scale down, make sure that it's locked, and then scale it down to the size you'd like it to be, and click scale. So now we have a very small symbol. Now push the M key for the move tool. And then I'm just gonna center this right here. And then I can also move the text up a little bit just to give my symbol a little more space. So that is going to be my label. Before we print this, we need to make sure it's the right size. So go and measure the front of the bottle that you're going to be putting this label on. Uh, horizontally. So measure from this side to this side of how long you'd like this label to be. Mine is actually going to be two and a half inches. So now we're going to crop this image uh, on the right and left side so that it goes right up against the border. So in order to crop an image, all you need to do is select the crop tool, which is right here, and then click and drag as if you're selecting, and you're gonna select the part that you want to crop. And if you don't get the size quite right at first, don't worry, because you can hover over here until you get that yellow uh, rectangle, kind of like the text tool, and then you can resize things. Okay, so once you're done with that, you can push the enter key. Now you have cropped your image. Okay, so now that we have this cropped right up to the edges here, we're ready to size this according to what you measured. So if we go to uh, image and scale image, we'll get this scale image window. And again, make sure that this is locked because we don't want to warp this at all. We want it to stay in this aspect ratio. Change pixels over here to inches. So right now we can see that the width is 4.51. So if I put 2.5 in there and then click into the next box, that's why we lock this because it automatically fills this into the correct height. Um, you always wanna make sure that you're working in 300 resolution. This is DPI. That way when you print, you'll get the best quality image. Anyways, go ahead and click scale and there we go. If you want to print more than one label per page, actually go to file and new and we're going to create a new image. And this is going to be, remember, we wanna change this to inches. And I'm working with 8.5 by 11 inch paper. So my width is going to be 8.5 and my height is going to be 11. Go to advanced and make sure that these are 300. Both of these need to be. Now click OK, and there is our printable page. And this should be just the right size. We can go back to this, 
we're going to select the entire thing so you can go to select all or you can uh, click control plus a for select all so we're just going to select all and we have everything selected we're going to edit and copy visible and what that does is copy everything that you can see if you just did copy it would only copy the layer that you have selected so now we have this copied and if we go back to this document that we just created which is the correct size this is the size of our paper we're printing on so we can go to edit and paste as new layer you want to always make sure that you're pasting into a new layer because you probably want to keep each label separate because we're going to then click m for the move tool and we can drag this around and put it wherever we want we don't want it right up against the border like this right up against the edge because when you print more than likely your printer is going to have some type of margin around the edge. So just leave a little bit of white space. If we have more labels than this to print, for each one, follow those first steps and then paste into new layer. I'm just gonna do a couple, there we go. So now we have these three labels. Whichever one we have selected, we can drag around. So just situate these in a way that makes sense to you when you want to print them and cut them. You probably want to save this just to make it easier to print later on if you ever want to use it again. So we're going to save it as a JPEG. And now in order to save an image as a JPEG in GIMP, we're going to go to File and Export As. And then we're go we'll go ahead and put it right here and make sure that we have JPEG image selected here. Give your image a name up here. I'm just going to call mine Love Potion. And make sure that you keep the file extension there, .jpg. You can uh, reference this if you can't remember what it is. It's .jpg. And uh, if you want, you can create a new folder. I'm just going to save it right to this root directory here. So I'm just going to click Export. And then we should get this dialog box. You want to make sure the quality is all the way up. And Export. There. Now if we go to this, you'll see that we have lovepotion.jpg with our three labels. But yeah, that's the basics on uh, creating potions and using simple tools in GIMP. Now let me know if you liked this tutorial and let me know if you'd like me to do more tutorials like this so that you can learn some more uh, in-depth editing for creating images in GIMP or Photoshop. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Like this video if you liked it, share it if you know anybody who would enjoy learning these skills in GIMP, and subscribe for more Harry Potter uh, DIY projects and other tutorials possibly. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.